Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, I put together my dream PC. I did a full video on it. This thing performs absolutely amazing with PC gaming. But if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I'm really into emulation and I want to see what this thing can really do and what kind of resolutions we can get away with. This is my personal build. I put it together for gaming and work. It was not specifically built for emulation, but this is kind of a side perk. And since we have it here, let's see what we can do with this thing. We're going to be testing out a bunch of different systems, PSP, Sega Saturn, PS2, PS3, Wii, Wii U, GameCube, original Xbox, and Xbox 360. But before we jump right into the testing, I did want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, I chose the Intel 11900K. We have 8 cores, 16 threads, with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a boost up to 4.3. The GPU is the Galax 3080 Ti SG. We have 32 GB of 3200 MHz RAM, a 1 TB NVMe SSD for my uh, boot drive, and I also have some extra mechanical drives in here. And I'm running Windows 10 Pro right now. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. First up, we have some PSP emulation using PPSSPP. This is as low end as I'm going to go with it because uh, I know it's just going to do, you know, Dreamcast, N64, and things like that. But I did want to see how it handled PSP at 4K. So here it is using the Vulcan backend with Dirt 2, and we're at 60 FPS. Basically, this is going to handle any PSP game as long as it's compatible with said emulator. Next up, we have some Sega Saturn upscale to 1080p using Yobase and Shiro inside of RetroArch. I tried to go to 4K, but I can only get this to run at about 35 FPS. So it's going to take a lot to run these games at 4K, at least with Yobase and Shiro upscale. Moving up a little bit to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, 4K, looks absolutely amazing with one of my favorite games here, which is Automoto Lista. This isn't the hardest game to run, but I still wanted to see how it looked at 4K, and it's performing amazingly. I also wanted to throw in at least one Wii game here, still using the Vulcan back in, 4K resolution, you're not going to have any issues with GameCube and Wii on a system like this. And going into it, I didn't expect it would. Next up, we have some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. 4K resolution, and I'm having audio issues with this one particular game. I got a lot of crackling going on, but I tested a couple more and I didn't have that issue. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this one, but as you can see, it's still running absolutely amazingly. Now, when it comes to the CXBX Reloaded emulator, there are some games that I would love to test, like Forza, but unfortunately, I cannot get it to boot. It always crashes on me no matter what system I'm on. But I did test Jet Set Radio Future, and we're getting the same performance. I did have to turn the sound off due to the music. There was no setting to turn the music off inside of this game, so I, I just couldn't do it from the settings. But it's running great, and as long as the game's compatible with the CXBX Reloaded emulator, you shouldn't have any trouble running it. PS2 is another one I always like to test with PCSX2, OpenGL back in, and when I test this out I usually go to DirectX 11 because I don't have enough GPU power, but with OpenGL on this 3080 Ti we can do 4K. It's really not recommended by PCSX2 to go any higher, but uh, I think we could with this. We're just getting great performance and we still got a lot to go on that GPU and CPU. I got one more here to test for PS2, this is Gran Turismo 4. Again, OpenGL back in, 4K, running super smooth at 60. Citra, the 3DS emulator, heavily relies on OpenGL, and we got a great OpenGL performance here. This is actually the highest I've ever been able to take a 3DS game up to, and that's 7x native resolution. Greatest. Winner. 
Going into SimU, the Wii U emulator, I thought we'd have great performance here, and as you can see, Vulcan backend, async shaders, 4K, Breath of the Wild at 60. I did see it drop down to around 59 every once in a while, but I think that's just uh, compiling in the background. This game looks so good at 4K, and I'm really not sure how well it's coming across in a YouTube video because of the compression, but it looks like a totally different game. Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator, has come a very long way in the last few months. It really favors NVIDIA GPUs, and this 3080 Ti can basically power through anything. Here's Forza 2, and personally, I haven't messed around with any kind of upscaling in Xenia, but I do turn VSync off when it comes down to certain games like Red Dead 2, and that's definitely a hard one to run with this emulator. You need a pretty specced out PC to get it running well. And with this one here, with VSync off, we can run it at 60. I've been really hard pressed to run this on any other system that I've ever tested. At least at 60 FPS. Some of the systems that I've built in the past can handle this at 30, but as soon as you turn VSync off, everything changes on those PCs. But this one here is pushing right through. I mean, I ain't one to judge a man by the company he keeps, but. Well, he ain't been friends for a long time. PS3 using RPCS3, both in back end, 4K performs really, really great. Now this isn't a super hard game to run, it's Tekken 6, if we take a look at that GPU and CPU usage, we're sitting at around 17% on the CPU, 14 to 17. But there are other games that are really hard to emulate with RPCS3 that require a lot more CPU power, they utilize more cores and threads, like Skate 3 here. Using the same settings, I just swapped the game out. We're up to 53% utilization on the 11900K. That's a big jump from 17%, but we still have plenty of power to run this game. 4K, 60, really good performance here. I mean, it looks amazing at 4K and it's playing just fine. I haven't noticed any dips at all with this one. And yeah, this is a harder game to emulate with the RPCS3 emulator, but there's an even harder game to emulate. And it really comes down to compatibility with the emulator. But if you have a powerful enough system, God of War 3 does run pretty well. Now I have seen somebody else with basically the same setup, that 11900K and the 3080 Ti, running this at full speed, but they did have that CPU overclocked to 5.3 gigahertz. Right now we're at 4.7, this is the stock clocks, and this game still dips down to around 51 FPS every once in a while. In the future, I think we'll be able to run all these games on lower end systems, it's just a matter of the developer of RPCS3 getting everything straightened out. So yeah, I personally think it does an amazing job with emulation, and for what it is, it really should have. If we got bad performance and basically anything that I showed off, this wouldn't be a great PC. Like I mentioned, I built this for work and gaming. It wasn't specifically built for emulation, but it's just a side perk. I mean, this is something that we can do, and since this is the most powerful PC that I've ever had in my possession, I figured I'd go ahead and test it out. The last personal PC build that I did was about three and a half years ago, and this will serve me well for another three and a half to four years. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out the build and how this thing performs with PC games, I will leave a link to that video in the description. If you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.